My name is Feina Shter. I'm a physician and founder of the Admitech Foundation, a non-profit organization leading national, international, and regional programs in prostate cancer education and research, public awareness, advocacy, and health equity. Admitech was established in 1997 to design and manage groundbreaking programs that created modern prostate cancer imaging. Our mission was to end the era of blind prostate cancer care and create the future of image-guided biopsy in treatment. We called it the Menogram Project to follow the model of the advancement of breast cancer imaging and its impact on patient care. Over the last 27 years, Admitex programs have been transforming prostate cancer care and reducing health disparities in black and Hispanic men. Since 1998, we led and supported pioneering studies in precision MRI, including research and development, pirate standardization, and clinical validation. Since 1998, we also led development of robotics for precision biopsy and treatment. Since 2001, we have been leading development of molecular imaging, PSMA in particular. In 2016, we established annual global summit to integrate advanced imaging with other emerging precision diagnostics and ensure precision care. Since 2021, we have been leading research in minimally invasive focal treatment or lumpectomy equivalent for men, partial ablation of the prostate. As many of you know, PSA screening has become more successful in reducing mortality than many other established cancer screening programs. Unfortunately, since 2009, PSA screening ended up in the midst of the most intense public debate and controversy, a situation that reminded me what happened with film-based mammography and breast cancer screening in the early 1990s, over 30 years ago. While well, field-based mammography was shown to save lives in large population studies, it was problematic in about 40% of young women who'd, who had radiodense breast tissue. At that time, in the early 90s, I was leading diagnostic imaging research at the National Cancer Institute and made the strategic decision to focus on novel screening and diagnostic tools rather than getting embroiled in the arguments about breast cancer screening with film-based mammography. We brought together international multidisciplinary key opinion leaders from academia and industry and together designed large-scale programs that accelerated development of advanced imaging, full-field digital mammography, breast MRI, advanced ultrasound, and many other approaches. Precision imaging, in turn, enabled image-guided stereotactic biopsy and minimally invasive lumpectomy that by now replace radical mastectomy in most women. These advances in screening and diagnosis have transformed breast cancer care and shifted controversy surrounding field-based mammography into the dustbin of history. In 2016, as mentioned, we established annual global summit on precision diagnosis and treatment in alignment with the Admitex Menogram project following the breast imaging model for prostate cancer clinical care and research. I'll present the key highlights of the recent Admitex Summit that took place only a few weeks ago. Grand rounds in urology, a digital publication with an outreach to over 50,000 physicians, has been serving as our media partner since 2019. There is not a corner of the world that has not been represented at the summit at the level of speakers or audience members. Our summit has become a seminal educational and consensus event shaping the current state of the art and future vision for patient care. Prostate cancer is the most common and the second uh, most lethal malignancy in men. It is as common in men as breast cancer is among women. Prostate cancer strikes one in eight men and breast cancer strikes one in eight women. Prostate cancer screening with PSA blood test has been successful in reducing mortality by more than 
Based on the annual reduction of mortality, PSA screening emerged as the most successful screening program in the history of cancer. And yet PSA test is not specific to cancer and can cause false alarms. It becomes abnormal with other prostate uh, tissue abnormalities, including inflammation, infection, trauma, and other benign diseases. Since 2016, our annual summit has brought together the key international opinion leaders, representing every imaginable clinical expertise, to address fundamental challenges in patient care, to develop accurate diagnostic tools for improving risk assessment in order to reduce overdiagnosis and overtreatment of subclinical prostate cancer, as well as underdiagnosis and undertreatment of aggressive potentially lethal disease. To integrate anatomic, biologic, and histologic diagnostics, liquid biomarkers, imaging, genetic cancer profiling, proteomics, standard and advanced pathology for a comprehensive approach to patient evaluation. This integration in turn requires bioinformatics and machine intelligence to support complex data analysis for planning of patient care. To integrate precision diagnostics with precision treatment for optimal patient management strategies. To stimulate discovery of novel targets for imaging biomarkers, drug development, and clinical therapeutics. To address health disparities. Our approach includes building a multidisciplinary consensus on the best emerging clinical practices and research priorities, educating medical community and general public, and expediting transfer of promising innovations to patients. Our recent summit consisted of four sessions and two panels. Session one was focused on the population of men before diagnosis of prostate cancer. Session two on localized newly diagnosed and recurrent disease. Session three on advanced prostate cancer. Session four on image-guided minimally invasive interventions. We had a panel on health disparities and a panel on bioinformatics, machine and deep learning, and artificial intelligence. Session one was dedicated to men prior to diagnosis of prostate cancer. The session's first topic was screening in 2024, and the opening lecture was presented by Sigrid Carlson of Memorial Sloan Kettering. For screening, PSA is here to stay. The most important development in screening is baseline PSA testing at midlife, starting at the age of 45. The growing evidence indicates that baseline PSA level may trump other risk factors, including race or family history, and can reduce unnecessary screening and overdiagnosis. Dr. Carlson pointed out the importance of integrating PSA with novel validated liquid biomarkers and imaging such as MRI for improved patient selection for biopsies. Her presentation also highlighted that the current risk stratification, including the number of positive cores and the percentage of cores occupied by cancer, may be rendered irrelevant by imaging such as MRI. Consequently, we discussed the critical importance of novel quantitative approaches to risk assessment, such as, for example, multifactorial nomograms for predictive modeling, taking into account information derived from liquid markers and imaging for improved patient selection for biopsies and treatment. For non-invasive diagnostic evaluation, we have seen a significant and rapid progress in both clinically accepted and emerging liquid biomarkers using blood and urinary testing. These biomarkers have been shown to improve prediction of aggressive prostate cancer and selection of patients for biopsy when combined with PSA screening. More recently, testing of blood and saliva for germline mutations has been recommended for men with family history of aggressive prostate cancer, and I will talk about this later. In imaging, MRI and related pirate scoring for risk assessment have become a new standard of care. Our speakers pointed out an emerging role of artificial intelligence, not only for image analysis, but also for expedited image acquisition. 
advanced ultrasound has an exciting potential, particularly when it will be integrated with MRI. Our speakers presented interesting emerging data demonstrating a promising role of molecular imaging, such as PSMA, integrated with MRI prior to biopsy, but further research is needed. Our panel on smart screening reviewed major clinical trials demonstrating compelling data on integrating PSA with liquid biomarkers and imaging for improved diagnostic performance and selection of patients for biopsy. It was interesting to hear at this year's summit from multiple experts that of all diagnostic tools, imaging has become the game changer for men, resulting in improved diagnosis and treatment of life-threatening prostate cancer while decreasing unnecessary biopsies and treatment. For example, in this slide, MRI shows prostate cancer lesions and guides biopsy needles with precision. Admitech has led research development, virus standardization, and large-scale clinical evaluation and implementation of prostate MRI since 1998. Our summit highlighted the importance of MRI in black men who are likely to have lesions in the front part of the prostate that are difficult to find by physical exam or standard blind biopsies performed without accurate imaging. Our screening panel reviewed just about every current large-scale major clinical trial. Many clinical experts leading large-scale clinical trials pointed out that given all the advances in imaging and liquid biomarkers, Patient selection for biopsies based on PSA screening alone has come to an end. Liquid biomarkers can be easily administered in any doctor's office, while high-quality MRI requires specialized clinical settings. Further, liquid biomarkers appear to have a higher negative predictive value in this patient population. Presented data indicated clinical utility of liquid molecular markers prior to MRI. However, more research needed on the sequence of testing. This is an example of the randomized clinical trial in over 12,000 men with PSA over 3, conducted at Karolinska Institute of Sweden. This work showed that Stockholm 3 tests based primarily on liquid molecular markers, when integrated with MRI, can reduce unnecessary biopsy for benign disease by 78% and for low-grade Gleason cancer by as much as 69%. Rather, when Stockholm liquid marker was used first, the utilization of MRI was decreased by 36%. Dr. Mark Emberton of University College London, England, described a reimagined study in over 300 men and showed how MRI-based screening can improve detection of clinically significant prostate cancer. He highlighted the role of increased PSA density, or PSAD, as a quantitative parameter in identifying aggressive prostate cancer in men with negative MRI. PSA density is calculated by dividing PSA by prostate volume measured by MRI. In essence, PSID increases the value of PSA screening in men with increased prostate volume due to benign prostatic hypertrophy. For biopsies, two advances have been highlighted. Perineal approach, or transcutaneous approach, expected to reduce infection compared to endorectal access. It is currently under investigation in multicenter trials and fusion of MRI with ultrasound for, for a combined image targeted and systematic or random tissue sampling. Session two was focused on localized prostate cancer newly diagnosed and recurrent. Our speakers reviewed precision diagnostic for staging, including risk assessment, and its impact on selecting appropriate treatment. Liquid markers, including testing for changes in prostate cancer proteome and genetic mutations. An image and image targeted tissue sampling for cancer genetic profiling and their integration or radiogenomics. In men with prostate cancer, there are currently two pillars of diagnostics MRI and genetics. Well, MRI shows cancer location and local spread or stage, genetic 
analysis of cancer tissue reveals underlying biology and probability of progression. Emerging data indicate the importance of genetic testing for many high-risk men, black men in particular, for selecting the most effective treatment. With this precision diagnostics, we can now accurately determine if each individual has a slow-growing, essentially harmless disease and needs only active surveillance or careful observation or minimally invasive procedures, or if an individual has an aggressive prostate cancer requiring immediate life-saving treatment. Research on radiogenomics has been highlighted by Dr. Sanosh Poonen, University of Miami. Radiogenomics integrate radiomics, or quantitative imaging, with histopathology, molecular, and genetic markers. Over the last eight years, we have seen a shift in radiogenomics from the fringes of research in 2016, at the beginning of our summit, to the center of the discussion on the future of precision care today. Emerging data indicate that the future of patient evaluation may be based on multiple integrated diagnostics, coined as multi-omics, including other precision tools, such as, for example, proteomics. This is a case study provided by Halo Diagnostics and demonstrated the importance of integrated diagnostics. In 2011, a 60-year-old man presented with a MRI-guided Gleason score of 6, an elevation of PSA, which at that time was deemed to be mild. Consequently, he was considered a good candidate for minimally invasive interventions and a direct MRI-guided focal treatment. And yet, he had repeated recurrences in 2012 and 2016. After the second recurrence, his MRI-guided biopsy tissue sample was also sent for genetic tissue analysis and showed high genomic risk. Consequently, he was referred for radical surgery. Dr. Matthew Cooperberg of UCSF showed that 15% of low-risk cases as assessed by standard diagnostics, including histopathology, had high-risk genomic features requiring more aggressive clinical management. Dr. Eric Klein of Cleveland Clinic highlighted prostate cancer as a biologic rather than a histologic disease. He pointed out that histology is useful for detecting a small volume, low-risk prostate cancer, and clear-cut high-risk disease. However, histology is less useful for the majority of cases, including large volume, low risk prostate cancer, and intermediate risk disease. And that's where genomic testing can make an important impact on personalizing patient care. Dr. Klein predicted that in the future, in addition to histologic and anatomic staging, we will have biologic staging. Of prostate cancer. Several types of tissue-based genetic prostate cancer profiling are available commercially, though their clinical utilization is uneven across the United States. Indeed, it is underutilized here in the Northeast. Our summit underscored the importance of genetic testing, including blood and saliva tests for germline mutations, particularly if for high-risk men, family history of aggressive prostate cancer, diagnosis of high-risk or advanced prostate cancer, Ashkenazi Jewish ancestry, family history of other cancers, including breast, genital, urinary, gastrointestinal malignancies, or melanoma. Genetic counseling is preferred before testing if family history is present, and after testing when it is positive, for mutations. Dr. Paul Boutros of UCLA summarized the current and future directions of liquid and tissue markers. New biomarkers must have a proven increase in prognostic accuracy compared to standard risk assessment, defined as providing information on the patient's outcome with and without standard treatment. Further research is needed to determine how individual patients 
will benefit from specific new biomarkers. For example, men with high volume, low risk, low grade cancer, or men with low volume, intermediate risk disease, or men with strong family history. He and other speakers also suggested that the future role of new non-invasive markers should include not only improved selection of patients for active surveillance versus treatment, but also for monitoring of active surveillance. Currently, monitoring of patients is done mostly by using invasive biopsies. In addition to prognostic accuracy, we need predictive markers aimed at identifying which specific treatment a specific patient is most likely to respond to. Dr. Stephen Rao of Johns Hopkins provided review of the current imaging tools. MRI lesions, particularly PIRAT3, when risk is indeterminate, may appear similar for benign and malignant lesions. In metastatic disease, MRI, CT, and standard bone scan cannot reliably detect small lymph node involvement or distinguish benign from malignant bone disease. He described the premise of molecular imaging with PET-PMSA, which detects prostate cancer lesion in most patients and correlates with tumor aggressiveness. Dr. Andrei Ayagaro of Stanford University demonstrated close correlation between PET-PSMA the standard histopathology for intermediate and high-risk cancer. Multiple speakers showed that molecular imaging improves staging, including detection of metastatic disease in particular. On the left, we can see a regular bone scan that shows no metastatic disease. However, on the right, PSMA PET demonstrates extensive metastasis. These findings are critical for selection of the appropriate treatment. In summary, MRI has become a standard of care and was included in clinical guidelines for diagnosis and staging by most clinical organizations. Based on the growing evidence, MRI visibility is an important factor in clinical decisions. When lesions are visible on MRI, pirate scoring correlates with adverse genomic proteomic and histologic features and clinical outcomes. MRI invisible lesions, on the other half, have proteomic and genomic profiles of normal and benign tissues. In intermediate and high-risk prostate cancer, MRI has modest sensitivity for extraprostatic extension and seminal vesicle involvement but poor specificity for lymph node metastasis. Molecular imaging integrated with CT or MRI is superior for local recurrence and staging, treatment planning, and monitoring, particularly for, de for detecting lymph node metastasis and risk assessment. We have seen emerging and exciting role of PSMA PET in intraoperative imaging for surgical guidance and the impact of non-invasive PSMA PET on management strategies, including radiation and focal treatment, as well as systemic treatment, such as anti-androgen and other drug therapy. Session two demonstrated advances in non-invasive and minimally invasive diagnosis and treatment. For diagnostic advances, we have seen the role of liquid molecular proteomic and genetic markers for predicting aggressive prostate cancer and treatment planning. We have also discussed the role of genetic cancer tissue profiling for improving risk assessment compared to standard histopathology. For initial disease, MRI has become a standard for staging, though we need to see more programs in improving image quality. We have seen rapid advances in molecular and multimodality imaging, and yet more research is needed. Further research is also needed for integrated diagnostics or multiomics, radiogenomics, proteomics, advanced histology. MRI-targeted biopsy rendered risk assessment based on the number and percent of biopsy cores occupied by cancer largely irrelevant. This highlights the need for new 
risk assessment strategies, perhaps multi-omics based nomograms. We have seen the importance of precision diagnostics for individualizing treatment. Session 3 focused on precision oncology for advanced prostate cancer. Our speakers presented a rapidly expanding discovery of prostate cancer targets for biomarkers, imaging, drug development, and clinical therapeutics. Dr. David Maynes of Cornell reviewed the role of liquid biopsy, including biomarkers, circulated tumor cells, DNA, and RNA for patient evaluation. Multiple speakers demonstrated the role of molecular and multimodality imaging for staging and treatment planning. For treatment, as mentioned, Summit pointed out the importance of molecular imaging for improving patient selection for anti-androgen treatment, or ADT, to avoid iatrogenic castration resistance and decrease morbidity. Dr. Daniel Petrilak of Yale highlighted the importance of precision diagnostics for precision treatment. He described how detecting germline and somatic homologous recombinant repair or HRR mutations, including BRCA1 and 2, for administering PARP inhibitors. He pointed out that about 15 to 25 percent of his patients already currently undergo precision treatment based on precision diagnostics. We have also seen the emerging role of immunotherapy, though further work is required for consistent patient outcomes. Dr. Song of Stanford pointed out the importance of PSA imaging for selecting patients for lutetium labeled PSMA treatment. He presented the current state of the art and future vision for teranostics, integrated molecular imaging and treatment. This targeted radiotherapy using PSMA represents an exciting new option for metastatic disease. Current data indicate that lutetium labeled PSMA improves patient survival while decreasing morbidity compared to standard chemotherapy. Session 4 of our summit demonstrated growing evidence that image-guided, minimally invasive focal procedures or partial prostate ablation provide comparable cancer control with significantly reduced complications compared to standard treatment. Precision diagnosis is critical for risk assessment and patient selection for image-guided treatment. While MRI has been used most extensively, we have seen the emerging role of advanced ultrasound, molecular, and multimodality imaging, as well as radiogenomics, multiomics for target definition. More research is needed for improved patient selections, monitoring, and outcomes. Almost every speaker in this session highlighted the importance of definitive randomized clinical trial for shifting the minimally invasive focal treatment from the current experimental stage to routine clinical care. Admitic has been leading development and clinical evaluation of image-guided minimally invasive treatment since 1998. When validated, it will become an important future addition to the patient management, particularly for many patients who end up in a gray zone where risk assessment leaves clinical questions regarding appropriateness of active surveillance or necessity of the immediate radical treatment. Admitex research is currently focused on expediting the clinical validation and adoption of minimally invasive treatment. Multiple experts from urology, radiology, and industry underscored the importance of digital health, bioinformatics, machine and deep learning, artificial intelligence for every aspect of patient management, screening, diagnosis, predictive modeling, treatment planning, care, and follow-up. There was a clear consensus that the era of only cognitive data analysis and traditional patient information management is over. Bioinformatics and, and machine intelligence are expected to be important not only for clinical practice, but also for clinical research and clinical trials. For example, by creating and analyzing patient registries or validated data sets.
Quality control of clinical data will be central to successful implementation of multi-omics, information collection and analysis for both patient care and research. Our health disparities panel acknowledged emerging data on the biologic differences in early stages of prostate cancer between black and white men. However, based on the large-scale studies from veteran administration in military medicine, our experts concluded that equal access to care is the key factor in achieving equal outcomes. It's particularly important now with so many novel diagnostic and therapeutic approaches ensuring high-quality, personalized patient care. Without equal access to these advances in patient care, we will see a widening gap in health inequalities, including survival and mortality. Consequently, Admitec launched the Prostate Cancer Equity Program in Massachusetts in collaboration with Mass General Brigham, UMass, and other clinical institutions with the mission to save lives and deliver high-quality care. Supporting organizations include Latino Health Insurance Program and the NACP New England Area Conference branches located across the state. Any Massachusetts man age 40 and older can participate. Our priority focus is on Black, Hispanic, and Latino men who are at high risk of prostate cancer, delayed diagnosis, poor quality care, and that. Our goal is to expedite access to leading experts who use the most advanced approaches to screening, diagnosis, and treatment available today, and to support men every step of their medical journey. This program helps men to find an expert for the initial or a second opinion, in-person or virtual visits. We believe in Massachusetts, with its leading hospitals and universal access to care, our prostate cancer equity program will be able to eliminate health disparities. Experts of the prostate cancer equity program can address any questions about prostate health, from assessing an individual healthy man's personal risk of prostate cancer to informing men and their caregivers and their providers about all available options before and after screening, biopsies, and treatment. We are committed to supporting men during every step of their medical journey to ensure that no man is left behind or struggling alone. To achieve this goal, we created a streamlined VIP-style process of patient referral and care, reflecting how doctors involved in this program take care of our families and friends. This process consists of three main components. First, Admitec Foundation team members collect basic information and match individual patient needs with the appropriate state experts for clinical care. Second, a clinical organization designates a patient navigator to expedite a medical visit and related needs, including scheduling, registration, transportation, and financial assistance if needed or translation if needed. If an expert recommends any next steps, Admitex team and patient navigator work with men on the appropriate follow-up, such as testing or treatment. Emma Coyard serves as a manager of the Prostate Cancer Equity Program. Emma is assisted by Erin Roberts, program coordinator, Craig McClay, patient educator, and other members of the Admitex Foundation's team. When you will refer patients to us, Emma will work with your team, Mass General Brigham, UMass, and other clinical partners to expedite medical visits and address any needs your patients may have. If you have any questions or need assistance, please contact Emma by phone 617-523-3535 or by email coordinator at admitechfoundation.org. Thank you for your attention. I'll be happy to address any questions you have.